Hey gang, we're in week six and we're talking about music technology. Now, the main reason I'm putting this presentation in this location in our curriculum is for the rock and roll test, which will be next week, I believe, for week seven? Yes, for week seven, we're gonna be talking about the Founding Fathers, which you did your project on, and we're gonna get to that content here next week, which is gonna be the same week as the test. Um, we're talking about the culture in America in the 1950s and music technology and how that and the culture of the 1950s were integrated. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna dive right in. Here we go. All right, so the first time that music was truly recorded was with the phonograph. Pause for one second. Make sure as we're going through this, you have your Google Classroom assignment for your music tech notes open in another tab. And as you're watching this video, you should be writing down the things I'm saying that go with this slide presentation, okay? So if you have not yet done that, pause this video, go to Google Classroom, get up your assignment for the music tech notes, open it now and play this video and then you'll be ready to go. Okay, so first time we recorded music was the phonograph. And this dude up in the upper corner in this sharp checkered suit, that is Thomas Edison. You guys probably know that name because he's also the guy who invented the light bulb. Thanks, Thomas. So not only did he give us light, he gave us music. What a guy. Um, but that round looking thing on the table next to him is the phonograph. Pretty crazy, huh? Instead of using records, it used like these tubes that almost look kind of like Pringles cans. And um, that's how the music would play. It would... Um, it would, it would be like kind of like a music box type situation where it rotates. Um, down below, we see the RCA Victor dog. And you may have seen this logo. Heck, I still see it around. Like it'll be on, I'll be walking through a store and I'll see it on like a, on like if you're trying to buy something, it's like a sound product. And that little RCA Victor logo is on there. And what that is, is it's a dog reacting to his master's voice recorded on a record. And that picture of that dog became that logo that you see over in the bottom corner. And that still to this day is used. Um, so, but again, it's a phonograph and then they just added a bell to enhance the sound. So that's what that is. So phonograph, 1877, Thomas Edison, moving on. Okay, so over time, the technology behind getting music onto, like recording sound onto a device that could be played back improved. It went from those like round, um, original phonograph things to this type of a disc, which are called 78s. And they're made of a heavy shellac, which almost feels like um, a plastic, but it's very brittle. Okay. So it's not as pliable as like vinyl or plastic. It's, it's almost like a plate, like a dinner plate. If you drop one of these, it shatters like a dinner plate might. Okay. You can see on the, on the right there, there's one that's broken. Typically at this point, in, if we were in school, I'd be passing around like a shellac 78 or the pieces of a broken shellac 78 so you could feel the thickness. They're very thick. And the 78 refers to the amount of rotations, okay? Um, so I believe it goes around 78 times in a minute, I think. That sounds right. I might have to Google that and double check, but I'm pretty sure that's what the 78 refers to. Um, so, but again, these didn't last for an extraordinarily long period of time because they were so brittle. Okay. So that's the shellac 78. Oh, I should probably mention by this point, it's, it's a needle. So the, the phonograph or the record player, as we get into that uses a needle that detects grooves that are put into, that are engraved into the, the disc itself, right? And it reads the different sound waves, which blows my mind. Like, I understand how it works, but like, I don't understand. Like, I understand how airplanes stay in the air, but it still blows my mind, right? Same with this. The needle goes across the little grooves and it interprets those sound waves and then it projects them out of the bell of the... It's, it's crazy. I can't even imagine inventing something that cool. <laughs> so, shellac 78s were kind of the first like disc style um, records. Okay, now these are the records that I'm more familiar with and that y'all might be more familiar with. Um, so now we really get into the record player. Okay, so it's not so much a phonograph anymore. It's a straight up record player. And it would play vinyl 
records. These vinyl records are more pliable. You still want to be very gentle with them because they can get damaged and scratched. But if you accidentally dropped one, it wouldn't shatter, okay? It might get scratched or damaged, but it would not break into sharp, pointy pieces like a shellac 78 would. Um, these are called often LPs, which means long playing records. You should put that in your notes, LPs. So you might hear an artist, especially back in the 50s and 60s, like, oh, our new LP is coming out in January. What they mean is their new full album is coming out, okay? Um, they're also called 33s. They rotate 33 times a minute, okay? And again, LP stands for long playing. And you can fit about an hour, hour and a half on one LP if you use both sides. Now, often um, you'll hear this reference, A sides and B sides. An A side just means the first side of a record. It can mean that on an LP or on a single, which we're gonna get to. Typically the songs on the A side were more popular and then the B side would have the songs that weren't thought to be as popular, but that would change with bands like Led Zeppelin, like later, where the whole album was meant to be consumed as a piece of art rather than just hearing one song here or there. Now, if you can see on this picture on the right, do you see how there's like a bigger groove and then a bunch of little grooves and then a bigger groove? That's the differentiation between each song. So if you wanted to listen to like the third song, you had to kind of eyeball where the grooves were and then gently set the needle down if you wanted to listen to a specific song. Okay. All right, moving on. Okay. So now these are singles, what we're talking about, 45s. Again, it rotates 45 times per minute, and it's only one song on each side. Crazy, right? So these little thin records, you see how small they are. Um, you would, like, typically an artist would, um, they'd be releasing a full album, but they would release a single, almost like a teaser. It's kind of like a teaser trailer for a movie. They'd release one song, the A side, which was going to be the big hit on the album, and then a B side. Typically not quite as popular, but not always. And um, yeah, one song on each side, you'd buy it. Um, but you'd have to have a lot of them if you wanted to listen to songs. My mom always talks about when she was a little girl, she had a big stack of 45s and she and her friend would get together and they had a little record player with a big, long, like, like a little um, piece of metal, like a little metal stick. And they would stack all the 45s on it and the record player would just like cycle through and it would play each one off the bottom, which is probably terrible for the records with them all being stacked, right? And she said when they were done, they'd flip them all over to the B-sides, put them back on, and they'd listen to them all. So that just shows you the effort. <laughs> it's kind of like the slow version of the YouTube playlist, right? Or the Spotify playlist, um, listening to all of your little 45 singles. So there you go. Um, but when you're on a record player, you would sometimes have to modify the speed because if you if it's 45 rotations per second or 33, you would have to change the little knob on the record player to change the speed or else it would be too fast or too slow and it would sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks or like a drunk person because the speed wouldn't be correct. Um, I don't know if it's on here, but um, I'll, I'll see if it is. But um, there also are these little things called 45 adapters. Um, I'll put a picture on Classroom, but um, it's a little, looks almost like a little poker chip and they came in all different shapes and colors. And sometimes you would have to put one into your 45 because you see the hole over here on this 45 is bigger than on a regular record album, which, we'll, which we just did. So you can see here, this little hole here is much smaller than on the 45, okay? So if, if your record player didn't have this type of device, you might have to insert this little 45 adapter into that space so it would fit on a standard record player. Pretty cool. I love this kind of stuff. I think this stuff's amazing. All right, jukeboxes. <clears throat> Hopefully you've all at least heard of a jukebox. It's not juice box. Everyone always thinks that, not juice box, juke box. And that name comes actually from um, these black clubs that were called juke joints, right? Where there'd be jazz and stuff. So it became juke boxes. Um, and how a jukebox worked is they'd be out in public, in restaurants, in ice cream places, roller rinks, like all these different places, there'd be jukeboxes. And inside the jukebox, the record companies would put all these little 45s and you'd go up, you'd take your nickel, you'd put it in and you'd pick with a button which song you wanted to hear. And then you got to watch the little record slide out, like that middle picture, it would slide out. And sometimes the little platform would rise up, that little round gray platform would rise up under the record 
and it would play it. And you were like, yeah, buddy. And, <laughs> and, but again, it was kind of a way of like, if you were in a place, like, let's say you're at a roller rink and your friends are all hanging out. You had to buy the songs to keep the vibe going. It wasn't like there was some CD just like playing on repeat over the loudspeakers. That wasn't necessarily the case. People had to make the choices. And believe it or not, the jukeboxes would count how many times each song was played. And that would tell them how popular it was. And that, that data was compiled by professional like jukebox people that would go around and replace the records and make sure everything worked and they would count how many times all the different songs were played and that's how they decided what songs were the most popular in the country crazy right i'm sure they also factored in radio play and like how many times a song was requested on the radio but jukeboxes were a big part of that and not only that but like they're aesthetically just Gorgeous. One of my dreams is to have a vintage Wurlitzer jukebox in my house. I have no room for that, but I really want one that looks like the one on the left there. So freaking cool. Um, so I'll try and also include a link to watch a jukebox play. Okay. Now, again, they have jukeboxes nowadays, but they're all digital. So you just go up and you push a button and it just plays the song that's a streamed or an MP3 file. Not quite the same. The romance of watching the record move and all that is so cool. Um, so yeah, that's jukeboxes. All right, radio. Oh boy. Okay, radio, we could do a whole thing just on radio, but essentially radio was great, especially for people that didn't have money, because if your family had a radio, you could listen to music that was on the radio if you couldn't afford records. So a lot of people that had more money might, you know, collect records or 45s or you know, but if your family wasn't able to buy records or maybe your parents didn't want you listening to certain music and you didn't have any money, um, you just had to listen to the radio. And um, the radio was so much of a bigger deal than it is now. Um, radio, if especially when we're talking pre-television, radio and newspaper, like that was how you got your news. That was it. No internet, no TV no freaking social media, right? Radio, newspapers. Eventually TV in the 50s would kind of come along and TV would start to replace radio um, for news. But when it came to music, it was radio. Um, some of the early television shows would have like guests on, like we're going to talk about that, the Ed Sullivan show, things like that. Um, um, American Bandstand, where they would have bands on. But still, you'd learn about the, the group on the TV show, but then you couldn't replay it. So you'd watch it live, but then you'd have to call the radio station and be like, I wanna hear the Beatles play this song that I heard on Ed Sullivan or whatever it was. Um, because there were no reruns. You couldn't hop on YouTube and watch a rerun of a TV show back then. So radio was huge. If anyone has seen A Christmas Story, that kind of shows the importance of radio when he had to be at the radio to watch the Little Orphan Annie show, or not watch, but to listen to the Little Orphan Annie show at a certain time. It was a big deal. So again, radio, newspaper, then TV kind of came in. But even once TV came in, radio was still huge. Got it. Oh, and there's AM and FM, which is like different frequencies of the sound. I could talk about that for a while, but we're going to move on. All right. So then in the late 70s, mid, mid, no, not late, early in the 70s, I'm not exactly sure what year they became huge, we see the 8-track tape. An 8-track eight eight track tape uses magnetic tape. Um, my little bubble's kind of over it, but you can kind of see under my face here the little brown tape. For the first time, magnetic tape had music on it. Again, it's one of those things I don't quite understand. Like, I understand, but I don't understand. Um, and when you put it in a tape player, it reads the sound off the magnetic tape and plays it out of the stereo. Crazy, right? So eight tracks were called eight tracks because they could fit four songs on each side. You can see on this gray one right here, it's got one, two, three, four, four songs on this side. And then you'd have to take it out, flip it over and play the other side. And you could get four. Now, eight tracks did not last very long in the mainstream, um, like market, um, you can see some cool vintage cars if you go to car shows and stuff that have eight track players still in them, but it didn't last long because you couldn't fit a full album on an eight track. Typically a full album has like 10 to 12 songs and you could only fit eight. So the eight track did not last very long because 
the cassette tape came into being, um, and that was super big in the 80s. Uh, a cassette tape can hold 30 to 45 minutes on each side, so you could fit a full album. You could fit a full LP or a 33 album on a cassette tape. Um, it's also smaller, and I believe there were fewer technical issues with the cassette tape. Um, also, for the first time ever, and again, this might not seem like a big deal for when you hear me say it, but it really is. For the first time, the Walkman was invented, and you could have portable, personal music. Again, we do that every day, right? We have our, our freaking little AirPods in our phone, and we have, we have that and everything else under the sun on our phones. But when, when the Walkman came out, it was revolutionary. The idea that you alone could listen to something. Crazy. Now, people always, their minds get blown and I tell them, yeah, but if you unplugged the headphones, you couldn't listen to it. The only way to make a, a Walkman work is you had to have the headphones plugged in because there was no external speaker. On a phone, we have the option for, you know, earphones and the external speakers. Walkman, you only had the headphones. And people would like jog with those. Isn't that crazy? You're holding that big clunky thing and you'd have to put a tape in. I remember riding the bus to school and I would take a Walkman and a cassette tape, but unless you brought extra tapes, you just had that one album. So you couldn't, unless you brought a bunch of tapes with you, you just had that one. Crazy, right? We also see the boom box being invented. Um, and uh, yeah, so tapes are awesome. I love tapes. When I'm at an antique store, I'm always buying tapes. <laughs> okay. Then we get into CDs. So now we're in like the, the 90s, late 80s, 90s, early 2000s. CDs work by a little laser that reads MP3 files off of a disc, which is crazy, right? Um, inside of a, a CD player, there's a little tiny eye, and it uses a little laser, and it reads it. Again, this Walkman version of a CD player, only you can hear it. There's no external speakers. Uh, the boombox got modified. This boombox in the upper right corner, it has a CD player on the top and a tape player on the front. Maybe some of you have seen these or they're in your folks' house or your grandparents' house. Um, those are kind of on the out now. People don't really want those, which is crazy because everyone has phones or Bluetooth speakers now. Um, but that's how CDs work and a CD can fit the same amount as an LP. So then we started to cut out the middleman, right? Because MP3 files are on a CD. So why not just take the files and put them on a device? So this was kind of the first step into that world where you could change out the songs that were on a device. Mind blowing. Um, these are all examples of early MP3 players. I had one that was a little round thing. It may be, I think it held maybe two gigabytes, if that. And that was a lot back then. And I was like, oh my God. And I would go on and put all the songs on. <sighs> crazy. I wanted an iPod so bad, but uh, they were so expensive when they first came out. So I had this little round thing. Um, they almost look like flash drives, but they're not. They're MP3 players. Okay. So then with that comes a whole new revolution of downloading music from the internet for the first time. So we see platforms like Napster, LimeWire, BearShare, like all these different platforms where you can go on and download music. Now, this creates a whole bunch of issues. One, we have illegal downloading, because that means if you're downloading a bootleg file, the artist isn't getting paid for their music. The record company isn't getting paid. So they started trying to shut these things down. Um, but that's like trying to put out a forest fire with a bucket. Like, it's almost impossible. Uh, and it's still going on to this day to some extent, although streaming really has taken over. Um, but yeah, putting this stuff on MP3 players, on CDs, burning them, selling them, right? Still a major issue, even with DVDs, right? People would do that. They'd download movies illegally, put them on a DVD, sell them. Um, I mean, I did it. Most people did. Again, we didn't quite understand, I think, then that that was wrong, per se. Um, it just sort of, the, the technology evolved faster than the laws, too. So the laws were like playing catch up. Um, yeah, it was an interesting time. We swapped burn CDs like they were baseball cards. You know, uh, my group of friends were all music nerds. So we would literally just be like, hey, I made you the CD. I made you a mix CD. Oh, I downloaded this musical and made you a CD. Like we would we would do that left and right. Um, now I don't do that, especially now as a grown professional, like musician type person. I find that paying money for, for something I genuinely enjoy um, is how I 
you know, put good karma because now I have a band. And if we were selling a CD, I would want people to buy it. So I try and apply that same um, principle to other artists now. Um, I realize that most of you guys don't have jobs or <laughs> don't have a lot of cash on hand. So I totally get a lot of you I know do the downloading from YouTube and stuff. Like, I get it. But it, um, if you are able, especially if it's a local artist, you really need to try and support them. Okay. So then here comes the iPod, which revolutionized everything because it had this track wheel and you could pick a lot easier on those early mp3s you just could skip through um but on the ipod you could be like oh i want to listen to dancing queen by abba click and you could just pick it um it also had more storage space the early ones had that black and white screen my first one was this little guy right here i remember how excited i was it had eight gigabytes and i thought i would died and gone to heaven because i had a black and white eight gigabyte chunky ipod love that thing so then the iPod took off like wildfire. They start making all these variations. They have like these minis. They have the shuffle. Um, eventually, they came out with the iPod Color, where you had a color screen, and it was like, oh, my God. And then they had the Nano with color. What? Thought we died and gone to heaven when all this stuff started coming out. So then eventually, we have the iPod Touch. And then eventually, the iPhone became so powerful that the iPod has almost become irrelevant. Like you can still buy one, but now there's so much memory on a phone that there's really no point. Like I have almost my entire iTunes, which is huge on my cell phone. Sometimes I'll uncheck stuff if I'm not actively listening to it to save space, but there's really almost no point now. And then of course the iPad came out and everything is synced in the cloud. So you can play a song you've bought on your iPad that's also on your phone. It's all, especially if you're in the Apple ecosystem, it all talks to each other crazy. And now, of course, we also have the Android option. So if you're a Microsoft person, you can have songs in your Microsoft player that sync to your Android phone, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and phones really have overtaken the MP3 player. And of course, also on our phones, we have apps now, like YouTube, but also different streaming services. I mean, YouTube is a streaming service, it just tends to have more video. Um, but all of these different things, you know, you pay a subscription now, and then you have that service. They're often free versions, like we use the free Spotify, there's free Pandora. Um, and you can just stream these things straight to your phone and then listen on your headphones or your what your ear pods or AirPods, whatever it is, um, your buds. And it's just like revolutionary. Like the idea of going from a shellac record to the iPhone or an Android phone is like mind blowing. Um, hopefully all of you are familiar with streaming. I hope you've all been lucky enough to be able to stream music that you like and learn what it is you like. Um, one of the reasons I love Spotify, Spotify and the playlist feature is it kind of brings you back to the burn CDs day of like when I was in middle school and high school, we would trade CDs. Now you can share playlists which is so cool. And that's partly why I wanted you all to make your own birthday playlist so that you could share them with me and I could see what you like. And, and that's kind of a way we can communicate um, with music, so. Okay, that's the end of that. I know that was really long and I apologize, um, but some of that stuff, especially the stuff about 33s, 45s, and the shellac stuff is what's gonna be on the test because we're gonna be talking about the music of the founding fathers of rock and roll and that was all vinyl based albums, 33s and 45s. Okay. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.